So it turns out dark chocolate chips that are 100% cacao are not fun to eat. Not fun at all. A big ass bee rudely bumped into me yesterday. I told him, you're cute and fuzzy and you make honey, but buzz off, okay? <laughs> My dog has gone <laughs> zen with squirrels. He's like, oh look, another squirrel. You aren't special. You offer me nothing. <laughs> I saw two blue jays doing it. You know, bird sex is a little more low key than I thought. Have such a good day. Welcome to Have Such a Good Day, the show that wants you to do just that, and we're 99 episodes into it. You better be having one. 2000 party over tonight. It's like, I, I can't remember the lyrics. I'm like, is that what he said? 2000 <laughs> party over, oops, out it, of time. So tonight yeah. I'm going to party like 1999. So Heather, and by the way, yeah. I'm Sarah. Hello, everyone. Uh, Hello, that's Heather. friends. <laughs> and this is the show where we try to keep the bagging, ragging, and sagging to a minimum. And we try to unpack the absurdity of life for your Boy, entertainment. I'm, yeah, I don't want to sag no, in general. No, no sagging. Right. It's like, no bagging. It, I mean, I like to bag a nice lunch every so often, <laughs> a little picnic basket. But sagging in general, I can't really think of any time I sag where it's No, a good but you thing. like to rag on stuff sometimes. I mean, we all do rag sure. on mother nature and yeah F you, mother nature and <laughs> your dumb flowers and your bees <laughs> your obese bees that just bump into people what the hell you know those bees happening? though that have, like they're huge they're yeah. like it literally like smacked me like in the neck <laughs> i was like maybe it wasn't a bee maybe it was like a small bird or something <laughs> uh yeah i know i know the kind of bees you're talking about i really like bees i under you know i, I understand that they're part of the ecosystem they it's a good wonderful. thing you know we've been talking about how bees have been disappearing for years I know there's yeah. like different varieties of bees and some of it is more of an issue than others but I like a bee I do and I actually have some <laughs> it's not regular lavender by my front door it's some I don't know I looked it up on one of my plant apps it's like a some lavender like Japanese lavender or hmm. there's some it's, it's a specific kind of lavender and the bees love it especially mm. this time of year you know it's mm -hmm. all flowering and stuff and it's so pretty and I love the bees. I'm like, yay, the bees, pollinating, doing your thing. <laughs> but it's really close to my front door. Yeah. And sometimes, depending on, you know, if there's sort of a breeze or whatever, because my cat isn't an escape artist, I'll leave my front door open, but I don't have a screen. Mm. Really should put a screen on the front door. And uh, over the weekend, I had, there were a couple flies that got into the house. And I'm like, eh, whatever, I'll just, you know, they'll eventually make their way out. But there mm. was a bee that also yeah, got into the house. Cool. And like, at that point, I can't relax. No. And the bee doesn't want to hurt me, but I cannot relax. <laughs> so yeah, I gotta figure that thing out. Yeah, man, you gotta get a fly swatter, but don't swat the bee. You could swat the flies, I guess. I don't but... even want to swat the fly. My mom was visiting over the weekend and she was here when there were, there was actually more than one fly, but one of the flies was like, yeah, it was like one of those like huge horse flies. Mm -hmm. And she was like, just give me a magazine, I'll get it. And I'm like, no, just let it go. Like, <laughs> I really don't want murder in here right now, okay? We've got a good <laughs> thing going. You know, I've made coffee, we're having a nice lunch. It's actually really funny. My housekeeper told me yesterday, because we have a little bit of an ant problem in one of our cottages, and she's like, I, I really had a hard time killing the ants, but I did because, you know, I know the guests aren't going to like them. She can't kill anything right. at all. I don't and know, I get it. I don't know any situation where someone's like, oh, this is cool that the ants are inside. <laughs> They're really I'm, cute. I, I, I prefer it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like killing ants either. I know that, you know, they're all working in tandem. And you they're know? trying so to it's live like, their best life too. Yeah, if you see a few, you know that there are more, and yeah. so you know steps need to be taken. But yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> like killing anything. I, no. I, if I don't have to, I won't. Uh, sometimes it's unavoidable, and I do feel bad about it. But mm -hmm. whatever. Agreed. You know, every animal creature has a right to live, except mosquitoes. <laughs> yes, mosquitoes definitely. can all die, and you know I don't want them to suffer, right? No, but, but it's just like a quick mosquito, squashing. The mosquito, you started it. You bit me. <laughs> you took my blood. You didn't ask. And now I'm Spider itchy shoe. and I hate you. And, <laughs> and you have, have a very wealth. annoying voice. Yeah. <laughs> and get the hell out of my ear. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Why do they do that? Why do they buzz near your ear? Oh, oh they're just, I mean, they are just, the worst. 
no redeeming quality at all. No, none. none. And you have to get a shot because there's like malaria and like all these horrible diseases that they spread. Oh, well, ticks get, too. While we're on it, malaria shots. I mean, I'm gonna bag on ticks. Going... For a wow. All right. We're really we're really airing it out, aren't <laughs> we? All of a sudden, it started with like, oh, a bee bumped into me. Like, fuck mosquitoes. Get malaria shots. You know, the word, the top five worst insects on the planet. <laughs> I mean, mosquitoes have got to be. I, they might yeah. be my number one. I yeah, mean, it's me just, too. it's just. And they like my blood. But ticks, though, too. And well, fleas. Well, ticks are terrible, but I mean, kind of avoidable, right? I mean, you, yeah. you, there, there are steps you can take to really um, minimize your tick risk, even living in the woods. Like, don't cuddle with a deer like I wanted to do yesterday. Yesterday there was a deer out the at the window and I told my boyfriend, I was like, he just sat down like in the shade and it was so cute. I'm like, I just want to go spoon him. You think he'll let me? And he's like, you'll just get a tick. And I'm like, okay. I think the deer will probably run away before that happens. Oh, for sure. There's a bunch of trails around here. Most of them are more or less streets but they're you know mm -hmm. they're narrow but they're like paved a car might be able to drive down one uh, but then mm -hmm. there are other trails that are also real trails i mean they're at least well traveled enough so that there's an actual path to follow but they're totally off the beaten path and um, they're so pretty and you go way up on ridges and you got all these like beautiful vineyard views and everything but i don't go on those anymore because the last time I, you know, I, when I first discovered this one particular trail, which is somewhat grueling, I mean, it's pretty steep, but I love mm -hmm. that, you know, because I'm like, yeah, cool, you know, getting my steps in. Like you thigh burn. Know. Yeah, thigh burn, exactly. Good for the glutes. But both yeah. Otis and I had ticks on us. Uh, and oh, I was no. like, well, that's not happening. And that was like a year ago. Um, oh. And I can... You know, you do the, you know, you wear your white socks, right? You pull them up high, yeah. and, you know, so that you can see the ticks and make sure you wear long sleeves. And it's like, but I'm not enjoying myself at that point. And mm -mm. I can't cover Otis. Luckily, he's white. So I can pull ticks off of him. But I'm like, that we're just asking for trouble here. Yeah. We just can't, we can't do these trails. It's just too much. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, no, no one's getting Lyme disease in this family. So no, definitely not. So that's, that's the end of that. I avoid tall grass whenever possible. Like even if it's a beautiful hike, I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm kind of paranoid of ticks actually. Well, it's not a bad thing to be paranoid about. It's, it's a real situation. When I first moved here, you know, and I was like, yeah, ticks. I haven't really thought about ticks in a long time. You know, I kind of, uh -huh. I, I looked, because there's certain places where ticks thrive more than others. And sure. especially in your neck of the woods, it's probably worse because it's wetter. But yeah, it's like it's like foresty and moisture. Heat. I don't know. I actually don't really know. Yeah, I don't know. I think they're more east of here, but you know the deer have them, and there are deer around here. So yeah, I'll have to do a little research on that. Yeah, side. I did. I did a uh, of course Google searches. You know, at your own risk, right? <laughs> you know, let's self-diagnose ourselves. But I, I was sort of Horrible hoping idea. that it was like, yeah, there's ticks in Northern California, but like, don't worry, all the Lyme disease happens on the East Coast. And it's like, no, <laughs> that's just not true. <laughs> I, I definitely, it's something to be aware of. So I know it's so sad when animals get it too. It's like, they don't really understand and it's just heartbreaking. Yeah. I asked a, fr a friend of mine who has a dog who has very thick sort of husky dog fur and mm -hmm. they're really worried about ticks because the nice thing about my dog is he, he has white fur and it's super short. So it's like yeah. stuff doesn't get stuck in there, you know? I mean, he's he's basically well shorn at all times. But yeah. yeah, if you have a dog that's got, you know, a bushy mane, it's like- Like a Newfoundland or something? Well, just anything. I mean, a yeah. golden retriever. I mean, any dog that, totally. you know, it's like, I mean, what do you do? Just like look through every inch of their fur every time you go on a walk. It's like, ah, oh, who's got the time? Aren't there like tick brushes and then you can give them like the flea and tick medicine, but that's just- Oh, I- just like an ongoing thing. I definitely give uh, Otis flea and tick medicine. I mean- <laughs> sorry, I somehow woke up my Amazon assistant. Uh, yeah, I was like, about ticks. someone's in there with you. <laughs> She's like, sorry, I don't have an answer for that. Well, you know what? You're good for nothing then. Jeez, <laughs> what, am, what am I supposed to use you for? Just turning on and off the lights, you dummy? Stop listening to our private conversation. Oh, I know. Yo. So how's your week been, Sarah? Other than uh, crazy wild hikes and um, searching for ticks. It's been good. It's been good. I've been, uh, I you know, I, I kind of go through my phases of like fitness. I always talk about my Fitbit stats and stuff on the show. And I'm definitely in a, it's just, it's, it's all weather related. Cause right now it's starting to get really hot during the day. And that I actually don't like, I mean, anything above 80, I'm like, eh, too hot. Yeah, um, totally. But there are certain walks I can take where it's almost all under trees and it, it's really mm. nice. And 
my morning and my evening walks when, you know, the sun has either not really started to cook everything yet or, or kind of more like dusk are also really nice. But, uh, but yeah, it's been, it's been good. I mean, I'm, I know that I will eventually, cause I always do this where like, I'm like, I'm so like fitness oriented and I get into this point where I'm like, if I, you know, like I had an hour and I didn't do like strenuous exercise for that hour, I like found an excuse not to. And then I get weird about it and I'm like, okay, I have to like carve out another hour and do it later kind of thing, which is, which is good. I mean, it's good to make time for, you know, being healthy and, you know, getting Mm -hmm. oxygen and, you know, all that good stuff. But I'm, I'm definitely, I know that once we start creeping into like the 95 degree time, it's going to be a lot easier for me to be like, I'm not going out there. (laughs) Screw my long walk. I'm not doing it. Uh, But Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's been it's been more or less kind of a little ho hum. We've got uh, we've got guests at the Airbnb. I had a whole week to myself uh, between between folks. Um, so we've got we've got folks here now, and it's great. They're actually return guests. So I don't really. I mean, guests start to blend together to me after a while. Like it's sure. rare that I like remember someone that specifically, unless there was like mm-hmm. I don't know. We had like some like long conversation about something, or there was an issue, or whatever. So these folks, they are return guests. They were here like last September. (laughs) And, you know, I'm like, I don't even remember them. I mean, I don't remember their cars. (laughs) I don't remember what they look like. I know they have kids because they mentioned it, but like, I don't remember the kids. But, you know, if you have enough people coming and going, you know, it's a bit of a revolving door, whatever. But they're here. They got a bunch of bike racks on the car. And I'm I'm always like, oh, cool. You know, they came prepared. They're going to they're going to have some fun. And the weather is supposed to be pretty hot all week so so that's all good so on the home front things are fine but uh but i uh i've also been thinking about just you know it's i think it's the time it's the time of year right because with uh covid pandemic stuff life has not returned to normal but life is creeping back you know i feel Mm -hmm. like it's like we cut back all these flowers, you know, a year ago, a year plus ago. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they're finally coming back again after, Mm -hmm. you know, this kind of decimated era. era. And, (laughs) but it's us. (laughs) And, and that's, and that's a great thing. And I am being as cautious as possible, but more and more, there's just little things that I notice like, okay, here's a thing that I can do a little bit more, you know, what I consider normally that I haven't done normally for a while. And that feels good, and I welcome it with open arms. One of those things, potentially, is, you know, hanging out with new folks. Because new folks were just off the table for a while. It's like, I don't know you. I don't know where you've been. (laughs) And and same with how you would feel about me. It's like, no new friends. And some of that, you know, creeps into, like, dating friends or potentially Mm -hmm. dating friends kind of thing. And I haven't talked about dating on this show in, you know, a million years because there was nothing to tell, really. <laughs> used to be a hot topic. It used to be a hot topic. And I, you know, I, I, I really just gave myself a pass for a while, for literally over a year of like, this is just not the right time for that sort of thing. It's like the in-person effort doesn't make sense. And I don't need a mm-hmm. pen pal. You know, I can barely keep <laughs> up with the people that are already in my life, you know, friends and family uh-huh. and, that, and coworkers and all that stuff. And it's just not happening. And that that was fine. And honestly, it was like sort of a good excuse because mm-hmm. I get overwhelmed by the pressure of, you know, sitting down for coffee with someone where yeah. it's implied that if everything goes well, you're going to do it again and then maybe like kiss mm-hmm. eventually. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's how this all the goes. The process is exhausting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it could be coffee or all sorts of things. But but yeah, so I just sort of wrote that off for a while and I'm I'm getting back to the point where I'm like, this is something that, again, Sarah, you, you know, there are no rules here. You can do whatever you want. But, you know, how do you feel about that? Because I'm a single person and I don't know how I feel about that. And I think a lot of it has to do with I had, you know, I, I've been single longer than the pandemic has been going on, but it was always kind of like a, you know, what things always tend to work itself out. You meet somebody, you didn't know you were going to meet them, you like them or whatever, and that you might, it just sort of 
happens, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you're actively like, no, I'm closed off to this idea. It, it, at least to me, it's like, it just happens. Sure. You know, you might, you might be a little bit more proactive about it, like a dating app kind of thing, or you might run into mm -hmm. somebody at the grocery store and strike up a conversation, like who even knows? And I, so, you know, and that just wasn't happening, um, especially when you're wearing masks and stuff. I was just, you know, th that's just the happenstance of it all was just pretty much nil. And I just, you know, I'm kind of like, all right, uh, I mean, do I want to be single forever? I mean, part of me is like, sounds great to me, you know, just like, <laughs> let's just, let's just keep it, keep it simple. Walk the dog, do your mm -hmm. thing. Like I'm busy. And yeah. so it's not like, oh my gosh, there's such a hole in my heart and my life yeah. and, you know, I need to fill it with stuff. But I also know it can be so rewarding and having a good connection with somebody who's a partner mm -hmm. of some kind, you know, and, and you, you have a harmonious life together is really great. I'm not avoiding that feeling, but I think I'm so out of practice that I'm like, sure. huh, I'm becoming one of those people who's just single for a while and like pretty cool with it yeah and kind of used to it used to it You've and adapted. and feeling like i've got a good thing going and anything else that could make it you know could enrich my life for sure but also disrupt my life as i know it now yeah. is like hmm that's a tall order you know because yep. i'm getting set in my ways and it's funny i you know you know how i love my reality shows and there's uh -huh. a there's a reality yeah. show called married at first sight i've talked about it before where two people like they get matched they've never met they literally have a wedding get married before, that's the first time they meet each other and then they spend the next couple months like being married and getting to know each other and then at the end it's like this whole like decision day and they decide whether they want to stay married or get a divorce so do they match in terms of like they find each other attractive that's like the first no they've they've never they've never met um oh, wow. they get what if you're like really not attracted to them at your wedding <laughs> well then you probably get a divorce it's yeah. you're matched by these like experts whoever they are i see it's just okay. you know it's just the show has a formula that sounds kind of fun i might, <laughs> might want to watch that. oh my god it's my favorite show but it's also <laughs> like of you know and there's there's like it's on its like 15th season like the show has been going on forever Gosh. and so there's 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 quite a bit of content and each season there's like I don't know five or six couples like they're it's they're not just following two people it's a whole reality show mm -hmm. and almost everybody ends up getting divorced but every season there's like two people and you go like you know what they are really cute and they like each other <laughs> they love each other That's and cool. they decide to stay married or you know whatever anyway the current season is there are these two people that got matched they got married they clearly do not like each other i mean they don't even like <laughs> they don't even enjoy like having breakfast together they just uh -huh. are not a good match they're not going to stay together i can you know tell you that right now but there's nothing really wrong with either of the two people they're just a bad match you're just like oh mm -hmm. the experts got this one so wrong you know there's like no <laughs> chemistry but the woman who's she i don't think i think she's about 30 so she's you know she's she's not been you know a dating adult all that long but her whole kind of backstory is when she was you know like eight years ago she was in a relationship that was like kind of toxic and controlling and because of that she's very independent which is mm -hmm. you know has has become sort of a detriment you know in her eyes to like meeting a great person you know and not being too mm -hmm. closed off you know and i think and I, and it i kind of go like yeah i mean I, i've been there for sure i mean i've definitely had relationships that like even to this day carry with me where i'm like oh i'd rather be alone than have that again you know <laughs> yeah. for sure so i get it but at the same time i'm like all right well you're young youngish i mean i know you know 30 sounds old to some people but not to me so the last time you were in a relationship you were like what early 20s and it sucked and so you've kind of spent all this time not wanting to get back into it and that's not my situation right now at all but i'm like god i really relate I really relate. Mm -hmm. Now, these two people on this reality show should not stay married. I mean, it's not like she should like give him more of a chance so it works out. Mm -hmm. But but it, on some level, I'm like, I get why she's like kind of like this and like almost borderline mean to him sometimes because mm -hmm. she's trying so hard not to like give up her like sense of self. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just, I love picking people apart, at, you know, especially people who choose to be on reality shows about getting married to a stranger. But, <laughs> but it's like, there are certain things where I'm like, I identify with this, you know, and yeah. I don't, 
I don't really know what the solution is. And I think, again, giving ourselves a pass for all sorts of things, you know, uh, since the before times, uh, and now that we're in the, you know, the AD version of, uh, you know, yeah. our lives, it is, it's all uh, kind of a day by day process. And I don't, I don't have a solution either, but I, I want to think about it a little bit more yeah. instead of just being like, Oh, boyfriend, what, what's that? It's like, well, I either want to, I want to be a little bit more, I want to have like a better reason for either not going in that direction or starting mm -hmm. to go in that direction instead of just kind of like somewhat stagnant i don't know because life is so uncertain it's like yeah mm -hmm. i mean sure life is pretty uncertain but like it's not going to become more certain it's just going to get uncertain in different ways exactly exactly and i think just keeping yourself open quote unquote mm -hmm. like just kind of like you know like you don't even have to be proactive just be open to it and i think a lot of times when you make yourself open to stuff things come your way i mean it's all that manifest stuff that i don't even know if i believe in it but i i think there is something to say about uh consciously you know telling yourself you're going to be open for something for sure things opportunities might come your way oh man i mean i really i don't want to get too you know like crunchy crunchy about you know <laughs> having a positive attitude but it's like i mean attitude is everything and that sounds so trite but you know there's like working out for me or gardening you know we talk about gardening all the time on the show these days <laughs> right again it's kind of weather related and and you and i are you know we've got gardens to tend to but yeah. you know or like getting stuff done on my to-do list there's so many things where i'm like i could just be such a mumbler grumbler about all of this uh -huh. but like i'm not going to and so that's just it it helps everything you know me oh, going really, to bed really early does. and getting up early it's like it's all like the, there's this whole attitude thing that uh -huh. that uh that can that can really i mean drastically changes outcomes of things you know oh, it's all I under our control helps too. oh it is completely i think woody allen said something like your world is like distorted however you want to distort it kind of thing well woody allen has a pretty distorted view on life yeah so. this is true this is true I'm not gonna to take his advice today <laughs> but i get your point yeah it's like i do think that attitude is is very key and i had a couple regular uh guests show up again this year they come every year at least once a year and they stay in our little cabin which is like our smaller little uh kind of house on the on the property with probably the best view on the property because it's right at the edge of the cliff and they absolutely adore it and they always they have a facebook page that talks all about it and you know it's very cute anyway um they some of these guests that are regulars will just give me a check when they get here most people go through airbnb or verbo and it gets all paid in advance but like some of these people will book a year in advance and then my dad had such a tight relationship with these people they said ah, just give me a check when you get here we'll meet in person and you know have a chat and so i had forgotten who they were because i remembered them last year but i didn't really put the two together it's this kind of gaggle of ladies with their big cameras and their big lenses and they go bird watching and they're really really sweet <laughs> i'm just imagining like all these women with huge lenses being like look a bird. oh no they really snap, are snap, snap. it's very cute they're very sweet jovial women and they have literally humongous lenses it's it's crazy so they're from the bay area and they're so sweet and I was like running around this one day and they kept texting me like, when can we give you this check? And I'm like, oh, like I'm in the other house and I'm, I'm really, really busy today. And I didn't really have a second to like go meet them. And then finally at the end of the day, I, I go out my back door because the cabin is actually really close to my place, my current place. And I'm like, oh, just real quick before I cook dinner, I'm just going to grab the check and say hi. I'm out there for like an hour talking to them and they're the best. And they gave me a really nice bottle of wine and it's just you know there are really some of those you know we talk and we rag a little bit about the guests that are really high maintenance that are calling you at 10 o'clock at night and you know you definitely have those days but i i really would say that 97 8 percent of the time really the people that are staying here are, are quite lovely humans and this one girl i think she was quite young her grammar is a bit rough but i wanted to read this quick review because i thought it was very sweet she said, this is the most magical place I've stayed at. The sunset on the beach can't even be explained. It was private and beautiful. There's a nice hiking trail only 0.5 miles away that takes you to a beach, which is private. 
There was also fresh flowers when we came in. I want to come back again. This is my favorite place to stay at. Anyway, I thought it was very sweet. And, there, and honestly, I've been getting a lot of really great reviews. And we have little books in our cabins that people can write. I always forget to read them. Um, I tend to just read the ones that are posted online just because digital is easier. But yeah, other than that, it's been beautiful weather. Um, but huh, I've been kind of stuck indoors huffing paint fumes, honestly. I've roped our Discorders into conversations about painting walls and uh, renovating houses. And it's been kind of fun the last couple of days we've been talking about tile preferences and whether to paint your interior walls with a color or just go with white you know like there's there's time for white walls as I think Sarah you said that mm -hmm. I, I like a white wall I like a white wall too you know it's funny all my rooms in my new house are painted a different color and I really like white walls and that's what I normally have, but I'm kind of leaning into this color thing because they, each room has a different vibe. And I mean, it's, it's definitely a painstaking process trying to find the perfect color for like this specific room that has specific light, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I've been in these like gray beige holes and now I'm in this like zillion shades of every shade of blue hole. And I, I have about 25 samples where, where I've painted on a piece of paper and written the name and can I hold it up to the wall? I'm trying to find the perfect blue for my office. And I finally thought that I came up with the one that I wanted. I'm not joking. I have like 25 pieces of paper with different shades of blue. <laughs> you sound like my mom. And, oh, oh my gosh. hell. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to have it. I would love to talk offline with your mom about this because I'm like, I don't really have anyone to talk to. But um, I, I decided on Mediterranean Breeze, which um, was really bringing me a lot of joy. And I had my gardener come over. I was like, can you like check me? Because I've been kind of in this weird hole for a while and I want to make sure that I'm making the right decision. And she was kind of like, hmm, I don't know. It's kind of baby blue for me. I'm like, really? Mm. I didn't even think about that, like baby blue, like for like a little boy's baby bedroom <laughs> kind of baby blue. Mm. I was like, I don't know if I want to go. Why am I so, why am I gravitating to this kind of blue right now? Like, what is that? Yeah. Anyway, I am really, truly looking for like the perfect uh, blue with a touch of gray. Mm. And mm -hmm. I am honestly, this is insane. You should see my list of paint names that I've gotten samples for I've been back to the paint store eight times <laughs> and I keep forgetting to use my coupon. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I think I'm back to the drawing board. I can't believe it. I, I cannot believe out of all of these. Oh yeah, because just a couple days swatches, ago you were feeling good about it. I know, I was. And now I'm like totally second guessing it. I need something with a little more gray, I think, because it might be just a little too cutesy, baby, baby bubblegum, blue. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's funny that you mentioned blue because, and I, First of all, I've never even seen, you know, your property in person, yeah. you know, so I'm not uh -huh. super familiar with the light. I mean, I get this, I get the idea for the most part, but it's like, I'm not going to be the right person to tell you, you know, what color room should be. I, you know, you kind of have to be there. But when you mentioned blue, that was my first mm -hmm. thought as well. It's like, Ooh, sounds like a baby room. Now I wouldn't <laughs> say that to you. Cause it's like, first of all, there's lots of different kinds of blue, like cerulean blue exactly. and sky blue are like such different colors. And yeah, you add some yeah. gray or you add some, you know, it might go more of Green. a teal, you know, kind of thing. Yep. It's like blue is blue is a lot of things, but I, <laughs> this all stems from, uh, the, the, the base, the core issue that I look bad in blue, like, like oh, a blue shirt. I just don't look good in blue. It's not my color. Huh. A Navy blue. That's different, you know, or a teal. Sure. I like very much, but real mm. blue, like Royal blue. Mm. I mean, I, I look, I don't like royal. I look blue like either, a monster. Actually. Some people look great in yeah, blue. It's just that? not me. I don't know. It's a skin color, eye color, whatever. Um, and I should really consider that. <laughs> other, well, I mean, you know, again, you're not painting your room royal blue, but even if you did, yeah. it's like you're not wearing it. It's totally different, you know, and you're going to have things yeah. on the walls and, you know, it's all sure. an accent. But blue is tough for me. I've never wanted a blue room because, again, psychologically, I'm like, eh. No, I mean, I go, yeah. I, I would go light green because I find it more flattering, but it's not the same thing as wearing it. I don't know. No, I, right. I think colors are, point. colors are, they can be really tough. Oh, they're so tough, but I love it. It's like, it's like, it's kind of been a headache, but like, I'm really enjoying it at the same time. And I would imagine that like interior design is similar because you're 
it's God, it seems like a really hard job to me because if, especially if you're trying to figure out someone else's style and you're trying to yeah. create a space for someone who has a different vibe than you, mm-hmm. like that's gotta be really hard. But yeah, I mean, right now I'm in the room I'm in is kind of an eggplant and I really like it. It's like a purpley kind of dark purple. Mm. Um, and I wouldn't choose it, but it actually works really well. Um, and then a lot of the other rooms have a range of like mostly very, very soothing light blue grays that actually work really well. And it lightens up, you know, cause with the light coming in and you know, right. if you have like a kind of a long hallway, it keeps it bright. And then we have, we have like the wainscoting kind of, and so half the wall's white. So it's not like the entire wall is a color. Yeah. All around the house, there's that half. Yeah. You know, there's, there's like a trim and, Mm -hmm. and a whole thing. But anyway, I think I'm doing an okay job. I'm, uh, I'm going to probably take the next 24 hours and continue down my, my blue hue rabbit hole. (laughs) So I'll keep you guys posted whether you like it or not. Oh, that's exciting. (laughs) It's fun. It's, it's, I, yeah, it is. there was some, some years ago, this wasn't that recently. Um, I haven't painted a wall. (laughs) The discorders know this story, but, um, the last time I painted an apartment. And in fact, I think it's the only time I physically painted an apartment myself. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the whole apartment, but it was sort of the main room. I mean, I went crazy. I am not a person with patience for like, 25 Mm-mm. paint swatches. I just like go to Sherwin Williams and I'm like, that one looks good. And then I start painting the wall and I'm like, I hate it. And then I go back to the paint store and I like get something else. It's all impulse stuff with me, which is, oh, yeah. you know, for better or for worse. But uh, yep. it's been a while. But my mom, some years ago, she just needed the house painted, you know, and she like hired somebody. She has sort of high ceilings, like she wasn't going to do it herself. And it was one of these things where, yeah, for a period of time, that's all she thought about was yeah. you know the walls and certain rooms and what it was going to be and everything was very very neutral very muted but it wasn't all going to be the same color like rooms bedrooms mm-hmm. had a different color than like the hallway and blah 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 and after a while i just started zoning out where i'm like mom just i don't know they're all fine just paint the house that's probably what the <laughs> whole audience is doing like when i talk about paint they're like oh heather's talking about paint well again. but it's it's something good time to zone. it's something that it's very personal you know i mean it is if it's your it's a fun if journey it's your house or even your room or even one wall of a room it's like it really matters I got to tell you, I'll say one more thing, is that my bedroom's almost done and I used that kind of um, taupey, greasy beige. And it it's completely transformed. It's I'm not even joking. It is like a totally different room. Oh, it for looks sure. so much better. You know, when I, I first- it. And the ceiling's white, it looks great. Oh yeah, that's, I mean, listen, fresh coat of paint and it's the right color and it hit, it, when it hits, you're like, yeah, I mm-hmm. love it. When I first moved into where I live now and I'm a renter, so I mean, it's not my place, but you know, the entire, the floor, the walls, the ceiling, everything is wood, everything. I love that. I, me too. I mean, it's it's so charming. I mean, I, but when I first moved in, it was, I moved in in October, a couple years ago. And so it wasn't winter yet, but it was like uh-huh. the sun had kind of gone, you know, it was sort of, it had, had, it had moved south so that it was not my, my, I didn't realize how much light my apartment was going to get, you know, in in sure. the summery times. Um, and, you know, it rained a lot and whatever. And I remember kind of looking around and being like, you know, you could leave. And my ceilings are super high and like vaulted, uh, which are cool. Like you leave the ceiling alone, but then you paint the walls white. And this place would really lighten up because, I mean, it's yeah. as beautiful as it is. You know, it's not wood pan- paneling. It's real wood. It's like, yeah. well, I mean, that's a very warm, you know, whatever. I don't even know what kind of wood it is. Uh, it's just, you've got a warm brown all over the house. Mm-hmm. And I could really, you know, and kind of modern it a little bit. And like, yeah, and like, sure, it wouldn't be mine forever, but it would, it would look nice. Like the owners would be happy with this, you know, as yeah. well. I love that look when wood is like wood two by fours are painted white. Me too. It's really Me, cool. Totally. Like you want it to kind still look wood. And then when mm-hmm. you leave the ceiling alone, you're like, oh, I see what you did here. And I've totally just, I mean, even though I still think that would be like, it would look cool. It's such a huge project. And I have so oh, many, God. like all do the windows have, you know, there's, it's just, oh, yeah. it's just, it's a, it would just be a it's nightmare. Insane. And I've, I've totally abandoned that idea. It was again, one of these ambitious things. I'm sure you kind of are going through that now where you're like, oh, I could do this. I oh, could yeah. do this. And then you're like, hold on a second, back up. 
one thing at a time. Oh yeah, like literally, so half the trim, most of the trim in the house, like I'm talking about the tr trim around the ceiling and there's trim around the wainscoting and the bottom, the floorboards. It's kind of an off-white that I don't like. It's kind of a cream. And then, so, but now that I've painted the trim white, white in the bedroom, now I feel compelled to paint the rest of the trim of the house because it doesn't match now. And I'm like, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, but how often are I you in your bedroom like... thinking about the rest of the house that you can't see? I probably won't once <laughs> I have furniture in here and stuff. And yeah, maybe the upstairs gets repainted like the trim and then the downstairs somehow like just, it'll be fine. Yeah. I know that it'll be fine and I won't go too, too crazy. A lot of the stuff. One room at a time. Yeah. A lot of the stuff uh, I, I find like, like when I got my, um, my HVAC unit had crapped out last year and the landlord, you know, gave me a, what do they call it? Like a split unit or whatever. You know, it's one of those wall units. Yeah. And again, I have brown wood walls. The unit is white. My ceiling is high. Mm -hmm. And so the best place to put it that made the most sense for like airflow and stuff was like high on one of my like beautiful wood walls that I specifically didn't put art on because I just liked the wall. And when I first mm -hmm. saw it, I was like, oh my God, I have to paint this like entire nice wall white so that it blends yeah. in. I hate this so much. I have to move. Like I literally <laughs> like, I went like I remember from that. zero to 100. Yeah. And then I slowly just was like, okay, well, in fact, my mom was like, give it a week. You know, I mean, you're mm -hmm. like spinning out of control sort of for no reason here. Give it a week. You know, just think about it. Think about what you want to do. And then. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm like, oh, I don't even see it. I don't even know what I was thinking. Like, it's just so, yeah. things that matter either become things that you have to address or you just are like, remember when I like really cared about the trim? <laughs> you, know? you just have to adapt. I swear. It's all about adaptation. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, I'm happy for your journey. It'll be it'll be it'll be a fun <laughs> exactly. one. And do keep us posted, will you? Oh, I will. I will. And I'm going to drag you up here one of these days. Yeah. Well, hey, you don't have to drag me. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to come. Love a good road trip. <laughs> and uh, I, you know, I've, I've, as far as I know, I don't think I've ever been to Humboldt County. I don't think you have either. Well, you wouldn't know, Heather, because, you know, I only <laughs> met you in our adulthood. But there was like, when I was in eighth grade, there was like a end of the year, like, school bike trip you know it was like this yeah. fun thing like where we all you know uh, all the kids had bikes it was like the whole class like i guess we wow. all just had bicycles or i don't know maybe some kids like figured out a way to get a bike but you know all the bikes went into like these like huge like trailer trucks and then we took buses mm -hmm. up to some camping area it was like avenue of the giants you know so, like yeah. not quite eureka for anybody who's not familiar That's with humble, northern california I, I don't know look on a map while i'm talking about this but but um, it was it was really fun, and it was like a fairly long drive. But even then, I'm like, yeah. I guess we were probably in Humboldt County somewhere. You probably were, but like kind of at the southern end biggest. of it. I don't. Yeah. You know, they call it Southern Humboldt. Southern Humboldt, yeah. Soho. Even driving through, because I used to live in Oregon when I was a kid, and of course my parents and I would come down to California to see like the, our extended family. It's like, I think we were just trying to get through the drive as quickly as possible because it's super long. And like we didn't stop on the coast it was just like yeah you know it was like an eight hour slog of highway it is because it's like the redwood curtain that's why they call it it's behind the redwood curtain because it's like it does it's far i mean california's huge yeah um anyway it would only be four hours from you probably three and a half yeah that's nothing something like that that's nothing yeah. i mean driving to la wrong, is twice as long four. oh yeah Totally. Um, and that is actually, I mean, it's not my favorite drive in the world, but it's like, I can be pretty zen about that when I'm like, listen, I got the oh, yeah. long drive, I got my podcast, I got my snacks, um, mm -hmm. you know, it can, it can be done. But, it can. but uh, what can also be done, uh, unfortunately, is, <laughs> that was a terrible segue, but uh, uh, fires. So, okay, mm -hmm. so uh, wherever you may be living in the world, uh, you may be in the Bay Area, um, or California in general, or some other place like Oregon or Arizona, or you know places that um, have had fire issues as of late. Um, this is just a reality of living in the Western U.S. and particularly having a few years that uh, there hasn't been enough rainfall to get us out of 
droughts although i feel like it's like every year is a drought since i was a kid i know it's perpetual perpetual drought. yeah like it's like oh we're in a super drought now and i'm like super drought i mean great like what's <laughs> after what comes next after super drought you know we just all just i don't know we dry up and die but uh but it's funny because over the winter there was i mean the rain did kind of stop early in the season but um in the winter i felt like it was pretty wet it was kind of raining all the mm -hmm. time and I pay attention to it because I got a dog you know so every time it rains I'm like oh my god my whole day revolves around like a slight break in the rain and like run out and do our thing and then get back inside mm -hmm. you know kind of thing so I pay a lot of attention to it and I'm like I mean okay how wet does it have to be to get out of our super drought well not you know we didn't get there and I uh all spring you know I'm enjoying my garden and things are blooming and there's blossoms and everything's so pretty and blah 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 and we're now in the part of May, you know, mid-May, where people mm -hmm. around here start talking about fire season. And it's a real mm -hmm. season. Didn't used to be fire mm -hmm. season. Now it's just like this thing that we all know will happen and hope that it won't happen near enough to our houses that we either lose the houses or at the very least have to evacuate. Well, evacuations mm -hmm. have happened for the last like five years now in some part of where I live. Not necessarily my my specific neighborhood, but like last year I was evacuated for a week. The year before I was evacuated for a week, like not even like a few hours, like a fucking week. And mm -hmm. that is, I mean, I am infinitely lucky and blessed, hashtag blessed, that I have never <laughs> lost anything and people have, you know? So it's like yeah. being evacuated is like, you got suck it up and get out of there, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's also a thing where I have been forced to really be like all right you know when you're evacuated for for the most part it's a precaution you know mm -hmm. for you know more often than not you're completely fine and they're being overly cautious and you got to do what the experts tell you and be nice to firefighters and that's what you're doing and then you can come back home i mean not everybody's that lucky but for the most part that's what you know that's what people go through but while you're doing that, you also think, okay, and what is most important for me to take with me? You know, because you can't pack up your life into your car, but you can pack up a few things that are, you know, irreplaceable and matter to you. And last year, I was not that prepared. And I should have known better because I had already gone through an evacuation the year before. So in 2020, and this is probably just pandemic thing and being like, what does it all matter? We're all dying anyway, kind of thing. But <laughs> I had gone to my mom's who doesn't live that far away from me, but she was not in an evacuation zone. And, you know, she's got plenty of room, so it's not a big deal for me to stay with her, you know, and bring my animals. But uh, as I was packing up to leave, I was like, what do I take? You know, like, like what's important? Everything is kind of like, I mean, it's replaceable except like photo albums. And, you know, just a few things that matter to me that, that are, I don't know, special to me. And it was weird. It was like, I, and I was kind of in a hurry and I was like, just don't overthink it. Like, ugh, whatever. Like so many of those pictures are digitized somewhere. Just like, just take yourself. And I packed yeah. up, like, there's this camera bag, um, like an old Tamrac camera bag that has my dad's old nikon uh slr camera like not a digital camera like an old ass camera mm -hmm. um that i used when i took photography classes in college and there's you know he had a bunch of like lens lens uh, a lens kit and and i was like i'll take that you know irreplaceable right and it's not even Definitely. a camera that i use but it felt like okay this is something that like i would be super bummed if it didn't exist anymore oh yeah and i took that and i like oh. didn't take anything else i didn't take anything else super unprepared and it bothered me the entire week because once you're out, sometimes they'll let you back. Like if you're like, hey, I need to like grab some medicine or whatever, like you're not supposed to be there, but the roads aren't closed. Well, this time they were. I could not get home. And I actually tried a couple times, you know, where I was like, oh, I really should have packed this other thing too. Like that's really stupid of me to have left that, you know, and you like, you get to the checkpoint and they're like, no. And I mean, you could be like, you could be like, life-saving medicine is in my fridge and I'll die right here if I don't go get it. And they're like, no. I mean, you can't get it. Wow. Uh, because they're taking it really seriously and so should you. Yeah. And uh, all of that, you know, that's all, that's all a distant memory. But I have to come to terms with this happening again because it very Anxiety well might. Inducing. In fact, it, it, it will happen 
it's more likely that it's going to happen on some level rather than just skating by for the whole entire fire season with no incident. It's just not the way it works anymore. And I am not looking forward to it. And I really hope, uh, I hope for the best and everyone think good thoughts for, you know, the crispy, crunchy, fiery area, um, mm. you know, and I don't know. I'm not trying to be like Debbie Downer or anything, but it's like, it's time. It's time to start taking yeah. it seriously, especially we had this really um, kind of a funny, windy weekend so did we. this last weekend and it was a red alert, Yeah, meaning uh, scary. It means you know, high wind, high temps, and that's how fires ignite. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at any moment, you might get a siren and you're out of there. Yeah, and you it's know? like, you gotta it's, go. You gotta be on your toes. And I think that's, uh, God, it's so anxiety inducing, especially you go to bed at night. Like, you may get woken up at two in the morning because there's some fire that broke out overnight. And, God, I mean, yeah. how do you, how do you like be zen about that? That's a really challenging yeah i mean it's kind of like i feel like i mean obviously when it's a fire if something like i don't know started burning like super close to you out of nowhere then it would be you know a shock yeah most of the time it's like eh, there's a fire it's starting to inch over the ridge okay we all gotta go like there's some there's most of the time you've got prep time yeah you know built in so you can sort of think about it and monitor the situation and there's obviously experts who are doing that mm -hmm. but i also have friends who if you don't grow up in california specifically or anywhere where there's earthquakes it's like i mean i don't want a huge earthquake that would be super scary even though i've been through them before and i know that they happen but it's kind of like that where it's like i could live in fear every single day yeah and every time i go to bed at night be like there might be an earthquake and the house will collapse and i'll die <laughs> because that actually might happen yeah probably won't but i you know i've got uh friends or like especially people who live in like hurricane zones where i'm like i mean how do you do it and they're mm -hmm. like how do you deal with earthquake oh no i feel the same way i'm always like you know ah. it's like it's all it's all kind of relative and it scary is. and the fire thing is the fire thing just fucking sucks well I mean, it's just there's like no way around new, it it's not new it's not like fires haven't broken out before forest fires but yeah it's definitely a new age climate change it is it's and worse than it's, ever it is it's it is scary. worse than ever yeah. so you you just have to like i really think like it's always anything could happen at any time at any moment you just gotta yeah. be in the moment be on your toes and try as much uh to be zen and just yeah i mean well i will definitely be crossing my fingers i mean i think about fire season a lot i mean we're on the coast which you know, it still could happen, but you know, the east, not very far east from here, it gets really hot. And there's a lot of, there are a lot of vineyards actually, you know, there's mm -hmm. actually quite uh, um, a sort of wine thing happening, happening up here. Um, it's, it's crazy. There's a lot of uh, wineries moving up here because they're further away from like the fires and um, there, right, there is right. good climate up here when you go slightly east, very slightly, actually, it's just like the adjacent town, but yeah, I mean, you know, keep up the the good thoughts and um, we will see what happens. Hopefully it'll be a better year than last year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> On that positive note. You can always come up here if you need to escape. I mean, I know you have your mom, but if you ever need to come further north, you and your mom are always welcome. Well, thank you, Heather. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I, will keep, I will keep that in mind. Okay, so yeah, I... Wow. I've, I've talked a little bit about this in terms of like the crazy making paint world I'm in right now. And I'm not going to continue to talk about that, I promise. But I've been thinking a lot about like, I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I'm in the process of sort of moving into a new space. It's a very big, different space. So, and I also have started like a new job in a lot of ways. This is like a new business for me. So there's a lot of different tools that I am in need of. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of sort of this like, kind of like crazy making, you know, painstaking journeys online to try to find like the best of the best of everything. And, you know, kind of, <laughs> well, how nice for you, Heather. <laughs> well, I mean, we okay, can't all afford the best of the best. No, I mean, I'm talking like not somewhat reasonably priced here, not the best of the best in terms of like cost. I'm trying to find what fits best for my right. lifestyle yeah. and totally you know, with some sense of style and taste but like not with the hugest price tag and 
Um, yeah. So yeah, that's been, you know, and I, I feel like I've always done that. Like every time I've traveled to a city, I'm like, Ooh, which restaurants should I go to? What, where's like th that bar that I want to check out? And, you know, it's kind of like, I guess, sort of curating your life in a lot of ways, but there, it's mm -hmm. such a paradox of choice now, because I remember the days kind of dating myself when there were like a couple toothpaste options. There weren't that many. There was like Crest <laughs> and Colgate. I don't even know if Sensodyne like existed back then. It probably did, but it wasn't on my radar. But like now, I mean, it, it's pretty daunting. You go to Target and like every product has like a million different versions and Oh man, it just makes things, you know, a little bit more difficult to sift through all the options and find the perfect thing for, for you. So in my like spiraling with, you know, just trying to do all the things I've been looking for a paper shredder. <laughs> I never, ever thought I'd have a paper shredder, um, but you know, this business that I took over of my dad's is quite, there's a lot of paperwork that goes into the garbage that my dad just put in the garbage. That's like banking statements and, you know, account numbers and just numbers. And it's like stuff that you really should shred. And I don't know why he didn't. I mm -hmm. think he was a little old school, but I, I've been talking to some people in his world about it and they were really surprised he never had one. So I'm like, I got to get one. So I was kind of in this like wire cutter, you know, Amazon consumer reports rabbit hole. Oh, I know, I know it well. Where you're just like, oh. you're like, I've read 45 reviews about paper shredders. And like, I have to make a decision. Like I can't, cause you can keep going. And the, it's the same thing yeah. with the blue paint. It's like, I could go on forever. There's hundreds <laughs> and probably thousands of gray blue yeah. paint. And I'm only going to make myself totally crazy. So the paper shredder i did i did kind of spend a few days like mulling every all these sites over and what i try to do is you know everybody has their go-to's you know there's certain journalists or experts you know there's a lot of different opinions these days and like who do you trust so like i know it's subjective we all have our people and our websites um i don't like just go to wirecutter and just totally pick what they picked i will definitely research the their top pick and their budget pick and their medium pick. And, and I kind of just like, I glean from a variety of places. Um, I tend to not get too far down uh, reviews on Amazon because I feel like it's just gotten so out of hand. It's like, you've got the one star guy and then like the five star and it's, it gets really confusing because there it's too. Yeah, divided. And there's also like a fair amount of like, you know, uh, cook in the books, you know, oh, where yeah. it's like you read these reviews and you're like, it's either like, overly negative mm -hmm. because it's like a competitor who wrote the review yep. or like overly glowing where you're like, these are all just fake. Oh, exactly. You know? Or it's like that person, that one star person is like, my package arrived damaged. And like, you know, it's like, that's a lot of times the problem. It's like right, someone you're like that is, that actually is like a weird anomaly that has nothing to do with the product itself. Exactly. And it's the same thing when people get uh, upset about a restaurant experience, it's not about the food or the ambiance, but they like didn't get seated on time. And then they give it a one star review. It's like, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I, so the paper shredder, a computer stand, I totally like grueled over the perfect, you know, height and, you know, material for my iMac because I, it was definitely too low and I'm having an ergonomic problem. And so I kind of went down this whole online searching manically for like the perfect, you know, computer stand for me and the gas range thing. That was like a whole uh, new thing. I don't know anything about ovens, gas range. I, I cook. I definitely think I'm an okay cook, but like I... Uh, I definitely don't know anything about gas ranges. So that was a really big journey for me. That's been happening for like at least a month. But you know what I did? I did something kind of like maybe small town uh, sort of mentality. And I did, you know, I did some research online on these stoves and these brands and these, you know, I had to get a 30 inch because that's the space that I have. I can't get anything bigger. And so I knew my parameters, I went on like Wayfair and, you know, Home Depot and all the kind of usual suspects and, you know, kind of gauged sort of a general idea of like what I'm looking for. Um, but I ended up going old school. I realized that if I'm going to get a stove, that's an investment, I want to go with maybe a mom and pop shop that's local, that if I have any problems with it, you know, I can have an expert there because they, they have people who are in the stove departments and they mm -hmm. could come up, you know, because we live really far up, up into, you know, on the coast. And so I would want somebody that could kind of be there for me if, if it, you know, I won't, I won't know how to troubleshoot a stove. 
And so I went to kind of the local spot. It's called Carl Johnson. It's like so amazing. You would love it, Sarah. It's like, you know, been in the family, the Johnsons for years. And they have like a lot of really cool housewares and a lot of Smeg products, which are like the Italian refrigerators mm -hmm. and and kind of appliances and stuff. And they have some neat stuff. It's definitely kind of um, country bumpkin-y, but it also has like a lot of nice like farm tables and whatnot. So I went over there and I had I had been waiting for this guy, Dave, to be working. I guess he works on Tuesdays. So I never really got a chance to meet this guy, but he was the stove expert. So I finally met with Dave and he really helped me break it down, like to a point where it cut back on probably hours and days of online searching. This guy knew everything about them. You know, I have to get a propane stove. I mean, do I get a dual gas stove? I mean, there's all kinds of options. So he kind of broke it down to three in terms of what I was looking for. Kind of like the lowest price one, the best of the lowest priced, the medium, and then the high end. And I wanted to know because there was another factor here. The supply chain is so messed up right now. And I hear a lot about this because I have workmen that are looking for a specific kind of window or tile or linoleum or something and they can't find it anywhere because of the pandemic and there's a lot of people mm -hmm. that aren't working in these factories and at these companies creating these products so there's been a real back log of a lot of things and so stoves are one of those and it's you know august september october delivery dates are like pushed way out and i'm like well i don't know if i want to wait that long, you know, I, I want to start cooking. <laughs> and so I, my decision was kind of based on when I could get a particular stove. So I kind of went with the middle of the road one. I didn't really want to wait long for the high end. I didn't even really want to spend that much. So it kind of worked out, but I, I don't think I'm, I wouldn't consider myself, I guess they call it kind of a maximizer. There's this, there's all this terminology around how obsessive you get in trying to find the best of the best. And you know, I don't think I'm super extreme, but I definitely feel like because of the amount of competition now and the amount of like the same kind of product, it does take a lot more effort to try to find the right thing. And man, it's it's like a job in itself. Yeah. Well, I I know. I, in fact, I had sent you a photo. My mom had recently gotten a stove, a new, you know, stove oven combo, that whole thing. And, uh, you know, it was, it was sort of just a modernization of mm -hmm. an otherwise modern kitchen. Her stove was just like, it was old. It was like mm -hmm. the original stove that, you know, came with the house. Um, and she's lived there for a really long time. And, and yeah, it was, it was the same kind of, actually, you know, she didn't really rope me into the whole stove thing the way she does with paint swatches, but it was, it was the same idea where it was like, okay, well, there's clearly a budget, yeah. but going through the trouble, it's like, okay, this is like a long-term investment. Like people don't like change out their stoves all the time. Mm -mm. So it's like, okay, this has to be something that makes a lot of sense. You know, you're really happy with, and you understand the mechanics of. Exactly. And you know, it, it's, and yeah, it's like, it's, it's not just like, oh, where does it fit? But it's like, you know, what's our like energy source? Yeah. And you know, where is this like feeding out outside? And like yeah, the and fan also, quality like and all of those things. Some of those products that are like cheaper only last five years. And then like the slightly more expensive one lasts 12 years. And you're like, you have to consider those things because I'd rather buy something, maybe it's, it's again, it's the upfront cost. So if you're okay to spend yeah. a little more up front, it will last longer. It's more of an investment. So there are a lot of things to consider. Yeah, there are. These are things that I, <laughs> you know, there are a lot of things that are very annoying about not owning your own space and renting, uh, which we've talked about. Uh, in fact, just last week, mm -hmm. I was talking about the good and bad of, of renting various things, cars and houses and, and that sort of stuff. You know, one of those things is that you just don't really think about long-term things. Like no. the stove, eh, does it work? Is it crappy? Is it great? You know, yeah. like the stove I have right now, it's not mine. I don't yeah. take it with me. Um, it's a nice stove though. I mm -hmm. like it. Um, and I've had stoves that just sort of worked yeah. before in the past, but it's nothing that I feel any attachment to because it's not mine. Exactly. I'm renting it. You know, it's I'm, I'm here for but a short time. Um, and maybe one day, it's not going to happen anytime soon because I don't have any money, but maybe one day I will... I will also be in the market for a, a new stove. I can help you. <laughs> yeah, so that's much. great. Also, before we move on, can I just say that although I love that 
that brand Smeg. Uh-huh. It's like the coolest stuff ever. Uh-huh. Also very pricey, but like so yeah. cool. I hate the name. Oh, I know. I hate it. It is. Because it, it sounds is. like Smegma. Oh, is that- well, it sounds like Smegma. <laughs> I that, forgot about that's that the word. Only thing, it's the only thing I can think of whenever that is I see so it. And I'm funny. like, if it was just a different name, I would like it <laughs> so much more. Because S M E G, you see, like the products yeah. are like, because it's like, ooh, I proudly have a Smeg fridge. It's like, ooh, <laughs> I'm so fancy and like so, you know, Art Deco. Uh, and I just, I'm like, I would have to, like, I'd have to cover it. I'd have to cover the letters. <laughs> I never I even thought of that. I haven't heard deal. that word since like the 80s. I'm sorry. I hope I haven't ruined it for anybody oh, no, who might okay. have. Uh, who might have a smeg something or want one but it's just one of those things where i'm like can't do it not while i'm eating (laughs) nope won't happen that's so funny that's great (laughs) well listen uh we like to wrap up our show with a little friendly reminder that we are a homegrown podcast here at have such a good day and we uh we we do it all through the support of our patrons anybody who's already a patron thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you and if you aren't and you would like to directly support the show uh, please go to patreon.com slash have such a good day to find out more about how you can support us one of the fun things uh we do week after week is chat with our community in discord anybody who is pledging at the five dollar per month and up patreon level gets instant access to our discord and we have a lot of fun in there and <laughs> some of the stuff we talk about on the show the discorders are like i already heard the story because yeah we're <laughs> we're talking in between shows about life and everything but yeah. it gets us um so pumped to like learn more about all of you because you know it's me and heather talking right now but it's really all of us and that's well, and you know how we you, like to think of it you tend to link people like we've got a lot of those guys talking in there without us you know with each other and they have things in common and and that's really yeah. cool too they're making new friends it is uh speaking of patrons we got a couple new patrons patrick and darth rob new patrons woo, joining woo. joining our cruise ship of delight uh, so <laughs> Thanks to both of you. So happy to have you. Um, it's awesome. You warm our hearts. Yeah, you really do. We're, we just want to continue to grow our little empire, and we're so happy to have you. Yeah, we really are. Also, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. HSGD Show is the handle in both places. New episode alerts. Um, you know, it's if you're a patron, you you already know when the episodes are coming out. Um, if you're subscribed, you get them automatically. But sometimes a little reminder is nice. And on our Instagram, we try to have a little fun, letting you know when things are out, what we're talking about, what we're looking at, and all the things in between. Of course, Heather and I are on the socials yeah. at our respective personal accounts as well. Mm-hmm. I really, uh, I gotta say, Heather, I, I am, I. I am such a, well, I'm still a social media enthusiast, mm-hmm. uh, but I, I've i really backed off on, yeah. you know, the sharing of things, and I I don't know why. I, I know, it's I, changed for it's me too It's not that I bit. don't like it. I'm more of a consumer these days than a creator. Yeah. Um, I create in all sorts of other arenas, but I don't know. Well, you know, ebbs and flows, right? Yeah, it does right now I'm on flow. a workout kick and I'll be, you know, on Instagram every day soon. Yeah, I go in little flurries. I'll be like, oh, I have a day where I'm really inspired and then I will won't post for like a month. <laughs> yeah. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just like we're getting more we're we're enjoying our lives, Sarah. We're in the moment. So we don't really want to be distracted by social media. That's kind of yeah, where I'm at. There are Especially with photos, Instagram, and I'll, you know, I, we don't have to go down a whole rabbit hole about this because I know we're wrapping up, but like in, when Instagram was a lot newer, mm-hmm. like I, because re- I really like taking photos. Yeah. And I liked having an excuse to be like, okay, what's the composition of the shot? Yeah. What filter makes it cool? Mm-hmm. What's sort of like an interesting story that I could add? Like, you know, what's the caption going to be kind of thing? It's like, and that's still really fun. But I'm like, this isn't novel to me at all. Mm-mm. And I'm a lot more selective about like, I mean, you look at my account, you know, my, my account, and it's not like I'm like an artiste most of the time. <laughs> I'm just like posting dumb stuff. But just the the volume of it, I'm just like, eh, I mean, what does anyone really need this right now? And oftentimes the answer is no, where before I'd be like, well, no, I got to, you know, stay active. Got to post active. every day. Well, Instagram used to be more like a photographer sort of a place yeah. to look at cool photography with like maybe a funny caption 
or, or a meaningful caption, but now Instagram feels just like a mini Facebook, but that's probably a conversation for another episode. <laughs> and it will be. I, it will be definitely. I, I, ju I just know it, Heather. We're gonna come <laughs> yeah, around feel it. as we often do. <laughs> But for now, we are going to wrap up episode 99. And by the way, I have said that it's a palindrome episode, uh, but you know, we're not going to get good. over, we're not going to get through an entire episode without saying, how about that, y'all? We haven't had one for 11 episodes because episode 88 was the last one. Isn't that fun? Exciting stuff. Yeah. Besides, you know, 99 being just a cool number. Listen, next week is going to be our new episode. And that's so Oh, good. God. I I'm going to wear my fancy sweater. <laughs> Me too. Let's put on party dresses. Uh, I love it. We, when we record, you know. And we'll try to remember to take our... a photo to share with you guys. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so everyone have a great week until yes. we have our little 100th episode celebration next week. And, and uh, you know, for those of you who are in our Discord, let us know how you're doing. And if you'd like to become in our Discord again, patreon.com slash have a good day. Find out more about uh, being able to directly support the show at any level. And thank you in advance. And until next week, guess what? I'll remain Sarah. And I will always be Heather. Have such a good day.